I'm Steve with Elevate, and today we got a really awesome Elevated 8 with Moo Glass. Go check this guy out. He is super cool, crazy, crazy milli work that's come together in some amazing, neat uh, rigs. It's, it's super awesome. Uh, really quickly, I want to throw it out there. Go check out uh, Elevate Brand Ambassadors, Elevate Dolls, and Elevate Gents. It's a really cool way to help promote Elevate and uh, you can earn uh, a lot of cool stuff there. Uh, we also got Elevate Veterans, it's a 501c3 where you get to help uh, uh, rehabilitate and reacclimate uh, war soldiers back into society. It's really awesome. Uh, anyways, let's get into this really exciting uh, interview with uh, Moo Glass. All right, y'all, we're here with Moo Glass today, and how are you doing today? Great, dude, great to be here. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, and. Uh, First question I want to ask is, how did you get into this glass blowing game, this crazy adventure? Well, man, like uh, already starting in like very early in high school, I was started getting interested in cannabis, and uh, there was a local head shop in my hometown of Boone, North Carolina, um, called Soul Shine Glass. That uh, they only repped uh, artists from Boone, my hometown, and so just I would go in there like as a 14, 15 year old and just like, they, they wouldn't let me buy anything obviously uh, till I was like a little bit older, but, um, but, uh, but I just going in there, seeing all the cool glass that dudes like literally in like a 20 mile radius were making and opened my eyes like, dang, I, uh, I could like, it's possible to do this. And um, I'd already kind of, I'd always grown up with kind of an artistic, um, tendencies like I, I uh, like was into pottery and uh, painted and did all kinds of stuff like that so um, and then through my love for cannabis and uh, like seeing those uh, locally made pipes um, from artists like really got my um, like I saw that I could maybe be doing it myself so uh, about six years ago I um, uh, moved out here to Colorado from North Carolina and um, uh, moved to Breckenridge, Colorado, and just kind of went to community college and skied like almost 100 days <laughs> for two seasons and uh, met some really, a really great group of dudes up there who uh, one of the owner of the shop let me get on his Red Max for a couple months. Um, but like really quickly, I was just like, man, it's something I'm going to do for the rest of my life. So I just like saved and like went hard and, and like bought myself a Mirage early on and just like... Mm -hmm basically from a month in dedicated all my time, like to just getting better and making more glass. Man, that, that's really cool. So uh, that was about six years ago, I guess you got into this. Yep. Wow. And then, so the, is that what brought you to Colorado is just the love of glass or was it the skiing? Well, so um, I was, I graduated high school and I wanted to go to, um, get some sort of start some sort of uh, four-year degree of some sort but I didn't know what I wanted to do and I didn't want to like start paying a bunch of money to go to a big four-year school so um, I figured and hey also I mean like going to a four-year university doing gen eds like math and English and stuff you're in classes with like two three hundred people or like you're you're a blip on the dot man and I mean, not to mention, dude, I got to live in Breckenridge, Colorado. So really what, what brought me out to Colorado was uh, I grew up in North Carolina skiing and I was a ski instructor all through high school and uh, ski racer and all kind of stuff. So uh, I grew up skiing tiny, icy hills back east. And <laughs> she was like, man, I got to go to college. Like, let's go to community college where I can shred some awesome powder. Just do it all. That's awesome, man. Yes, sir. Well, welcome to Colorado. I've been blessed to be here 43 years. So, uh. <laughs> oh man, it's it's the bomb, man. And yeah, not I, I don't see myself leaving at any time. <laughs> yeah, I really enjoy it. Um, so, how did you get your glass name? So, my glass name is Moo Glass, and my last name is Moo Ma. So, uh -huh. kind of just fell into my lap pretty pretty easily that way, and. Uh, um, yeah, and I mean, even like my good buddies and, and people I, I know started started calling me new and stuff. So um, it looks like kind of fell into place. And then my girl is uh, really into drawing art and stuff, and she's really talented at capturing me as a cow. So um, she like she made this shirt for me, and uh, 
she does all kind of other cool artwork for me. Um, yeah, that's pretty so. neat how the, your last name went in there because I know I see a lot of cow stuff. So I just thought, hey, maybe you just loved cows. But totally. the tie is great. Do you like cows? <laughs> so, yeah. And I mean, like, honestly, like uh, since I, I branded myself as Moo Glass and I started like just like screenshotting and like posting more stuff about cows on my story to be funny and like uh, – I, and like I now I collect cow stuff and uh, it's just kind of become a whole thing. And, and um, also then the other thing people ask me is like move glass or like you making like glass cows or like cow rigs or like, are you going to do cow print stuff? And like, that's not really, it's just kind of, I was blessed with uh, my last name and I kind of rolled with it. And, and at some point I think I'll try to, um, uh, integrate that kind of a cow like Holstein black and white pattern into my functional work and just work uh, in some capacity for sure. Hell yeah, that's awesome. Um, so you've been on the torch for about six years. Uh, and uh, what items did you start out with? Were they just, did you just jump into pipes? Were they marbles, pendants? Yeah, so I pretty quickly was started to make uh, pipes and like just horribly melted in frit, um, like, uh, spoons and hammers and just like, just really, really, as you can imagine, awful stuff from, from someone starting out as you can imagine. But, um, I just, I, I had a love for water pipes and stuff too. And so I really, um, just, um, push myself as hard as I could to get to that point where I could make a water pipe that I could use, um, Myself. Your rigs now are really nice, especially at six years. Like, holy camoly. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, and so like the past five years as well, the only about the last year and a half have I been working full time because um, I, by the time I, I got far enough into my glass career to like realize I could make a living from blowing glass and that I was like maybe talented enough to, to pull it off, I had already invested so much time and energy and and money into getting a four year degree that I just, I had to finish that out. So really only for the last year and a half have I been blowing glass full time. All right, what did you go for your four year degree? So I, I went to uh, Colorado State University here in Fort Collins and I got a degree in soil and crop science. Right on. I, my original motivation was uh, interest in growing uh, CBD industrial hemp. Um, and in fact, I worked for on a, on a hemp farm for a couple of years. Um, but again, just like glass took over, man, and I didn't have time for it and or interest. And just I not only is glass like a job now for me, but I still harbor an immense love for it. And like um, I, especially like the Millie work, um, like making hollow sections to turn into functionals is is just an enormous labor of love because the amount of hours you get for it. And then especially like where I'm, I'm at right now where I'm trying to climb the ladder and uh, make nicer stuff and get more money for it. It's really difficult to put 40, 50 hours into just the prep sections and then another 30, 40 hours to put it into a colored piece and then get paid correctly for it. Is, right. Uh, but, but I, I've, I've been, I built uh, like a good kind of, I've been doing it kind of slowly since I've been doing it part time. I've been building a good team with uh, I work in um, the studio with the guys that run the Colorado Color Company. OK, um, that's a beautiful studio. Yeah. Dude. Oh, it's amazing. I mean, like, yeah, I, it's the nicest studio I've ever had the pleasure of working in for sure. And, and just being able to go there and like always consistent, like never have to worry about anything. Just go turn on gases, electric like kiln and like get on it and go. And I got a nice bench station and kiln kiln uh, or lathe station. And, um, but, but so like with, through them, I've been able to uh, sell a lot of my uh, image uh, uh, millies, like grateful dead bear skulls, um, like cane, they are selling. Um, they've got a, like a large uh, volume of glass blowers coming to them. Yeah. So yeah. I'm able to, they're able to sell a lot of my, uh, of Millie uh, with me. So, um, so that's a nice point to, to point out is uh, as an artist, finding a network, whether it just be your own retail network or finding shops to work with or, totally. or maybe even working with a, a distributor and whatnot. Totally. totally. And, I, and, I've been, and I've been really blessed in like uh, I haven't really had to force any relationships or work with any like 
people that tried to like do me wrong and like undercut my value, my work, I just like don't have to bother with them anymore. And like uh, through, through more like my friend connections and like where I grew up, I've just uh, like established just uh, amazing connections. Like, so for my functional work, I, I uh, um, am from North Carolina where level 42 is based. Um, okay. And just, I mean, uh, maybe I'm biased, but probably one of my favorite <laughs> galleries in the U S right now. And just, and um, so like, since I grew up uh, close to where they're doing business, uh, I um, reached out to them and then um, normally they don't do business with, uh, or like uh, work with artists outside of North Carolina. But since I'm a, a North Carolina born and raised, they, they started working for me. And it's just an amazing group of people that are just like, can sell glass like no other it's crazy hell so, yeah really just that all those like connections have really come together and like i've only been doing this for like last year at the beginning of the pandemic was like when i graduated and started working full time and i kind of pictured like was kind of shit myself like this is gonna be can i could i like make this happen no and, doubt i mean the in the craziest year on record probably i was booked out like two months in advance the entire time with like just having stores see what I'm dropping on Instagram and or like making new orders. And, and I finally had to put um, a stop to it where I, uh, I said, I, I'm, I'm not taking any more orders cause I need to, uh, all I had established was a, a clear line. So all shops could order was a clear line. So I, I had to take a step back and um, I'm going to establish a, a colored, a colored line. Um, oh, yeah. and, and also start working more with uh, like milli sections and making a couple really, really, really nice pieces to go along with just all of it. Have you done any of the taking your millies and then stack them around to, to make milli sections yet? Yeah, yeah, totally. So um, here is one of the first ones um, that I made. Um, Holy mackerels. Yeah. And so there's like a single chip of it in that marble. Yeah. And, um, and then here is a second one that um, turned out even better, in my opinion, using that new uh, Stargazer um, color. Yeah, that's beautiful. Super clean, man. Thank you. And yeah, and so like, I made these couple pieces with my, uh, with my milli sections and I've been really kind of now even taking a step back after I, I, I did it once or twice. And now I'm trying to refine a, like a, a recycler, uh, just a, like a, a unique um, signature recycler and matching kind of mini tube style that I can lay um, just like a really big milli section on the can and then a really big one for the neck too. Right. Um, right. Yeah. But then also just be able to like, with the abstract milli tile game, it's hard to make a brand for yourself with just abstract milli. So I'm I'm going to try to establish more of a signature functional vessel that that uh, my, whatever milli I, I like comes to me and I'm inspired to make will go into the same signature vessel. Right. So you'll recognize it's a mood glass. Right, right. Yeah, and that's the hard thing, always like finding you as a glass artist. And because totally. totally. while you're finding you, somebody else is finding them. And then did they find themselves first? And are you hitting the same thing? And all these totally. things are. And, and just so many people out there that it's just like, it's a feeding frenzy. And just like, and, and everybody, nobody wants to grind proto ideally. Like, and I mean, some people do, and they just want to make money and um, they're, they're open to that. But most people want to just make the headier and headier and headier work. So it's not like you're up there trying to compete with nobody. Um, right. It, it's fun stuff. Just it's almost competing with yourself. And while you can see others to compete, it's just that getting on the golf course, beating your score every time, making no, the next best piece. Absolutely. And that's like a big thing that's driven me is just like, uh, like resentment for myself where like I, every piece I pull out of the kiln, I'm like, Oh, it's garbage. dude. <laughs> and like, it's like a perfect first quality, pristine piece. Someone's psyched to buy it, but I just like the next one's got to be better. So every single time. Yeah. And that's really neat that you see that. Cause if you don't see it, 
you just get stuck making the the same stuff and you're not like it, it's hard to live in this ah i fucked up again and i fucked up and each piece sucks but it doesn't suck each piece totally. is getting better and you're you're yeah so that's cool totally, totally. yeah and like and that's again like there's so many people up and like trying to make and, and even like use millisections in their pieces so where i am going to what i'm going to bring to the game that uh, is just like my cleanliness and attention to detail and just like how immaculate my millisections and functionals not only look, but also function. Um, so. Sounds like you got a plan. Totally. Yeah. 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 Um, did you have a mentor while you were coming up? So not really. I mean, like, honestly, I guess if I had to, I, I had obviously like great uh, artists that I shared space with and like, um, Everybody, like I, I moved to Fort Collins and worked with uh, Jason Hedman. Um, he's awesome. He's an amazing dude, yeah. And um, he just brought me in and started, uh, like, helped me out getting into the scene here. And um, then I moved studios uh, um, and several times. And then now I'm in the, with the uh, Colorado Color Company. And, um, yeah, I've just always had great people. But honestly, like, not one person I learned tech from or, like, I really – I taught myself and I, I've taken maybe three classes over the last um, six years. Um, probably the most notable and what I got the most out of was uh, taking a Ryan McCooler class who uh, he just makes like the cleanest, best uh, like Millie out there, I, I would say, um, for like, like uh, uh, characters like uh, um, Simpsons or Steal Your Face or anything like that. Uh, he'll hit it exactly spot on. Um, so that class just really stepped up my game for making that um, uh, uh, Millie image uh, work that I sell so much of through the Colorado Color Company. But, right. um, so taking but, a class really helps out, you think, then? Oh, 100%. I mean, it's totally like, I mean, sometimes you'll go to a class and there's a lot of hanging out and there's not a lot of teaching and stuff. And and, but what I've learned from that is like uh, the first class I ever went to, it was, it, it, there was some of that. And um, I was kind of upset because I was coming from a university where we go and we sit down for 50 minutes and like we're toss shit. And like, it was more just like, Oh, you got to hopefully be in the studio when they're doing a demo and they're not working all day. And, uh, but then what I learned is you just gotta, you gotta network and make connections where I like through that class, I'd learned a ton. Um, but I also made, because there wasn't like only working in the studio, I was out meeting the other guy, like other glass blowers, and uh, making connections. Um, even with this lovely woman that didn't speak English, you know, this Japanese woman who uh, I still like, she has to use like Google Translate to send me messages on Instagram, but um, to just like make amazing lifelong connections uh, um, through classes like that. Um, Don't stop networking. That's awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, uh, what, where do you get your inspiration from and your creativity from now? So, um, I guess I got a lot of originally coming up in the scene. I, I got a lot of uh, inspiration through like just watching Instagram and seeing what the scene was doing. And, um, but once I kind of started doing it full time, I didn't lose sight of what the scene was doing, but I kind of just tried to like start um like self-reflection and figuring out like a signature piece and uh uh pattern work that really spoke to me and that i could i think execute really well um and i kind of just took a step back and, and figured out where my skill set was and what i had to bring to the table and and um so now i guess i draw more inspiration from from myself uh more than anything but um i like that I like that a lot, man, because uh, without you, you, you just don't exist. And, uh, or, you're just, or you're just making another guy's piece. And like, I mean, there are examples out there where like, I mean, you could become one of the top guys in the entire industry using someone else's design. But, um, and I mean, that's not invalid, I guess. Um, but that's just not a style I can, uh, I can rep in myself because I just – wouldn't be comfortable doing that. But, um, and like, maybe I overthink it too much where like, I'm really, I, I'm on 
prototype number 10 for this recycler and I'm on prototype number two for this mini tube and like with still not really an end in sight but um so maybe I'm overthinking it but like I really like I'm really trying to set up a, a career that's got longevity and that I can really build off of for the rest of my life and I hope to be blown glass with the same, like under mood glass when I'm 75. Um, right, right. And so I don't think there is, you know, it, I, I heard this thing a long time. You failed a plan, you plan to fail. So, you know, you're working on a plan, you're doing all that. And I don't think you can overthink. It's like chess. You, you gotta, you gotta think of all the moves because you don't know what's going to happen. Right. And that's, and that's the, and that's the issue with like uh, being on Instagram too much and seeing what everybody else is doing is because you see someone else do it that way. And you're like, second guess yourself and you're like shit do i really need to come up with something that unique and um like i, I think if like, you love it do it you because because yeah. all those ideas are happening if you see somebody and they're inspired take that i mean sure. I, I yeah so that that's cool and then you yeah. you put your twist to it yeah that's why i've kind of like why i say i've been trying to draw more inspiration from myself where like i am Cause that's where you can run a foul too, is if you spend too much time on social media, you'll just, Oh, I made this cool signature piece, but it looks exactly like 20 other things that were posted yesterday. Cause you subconsciously work that into your own work. That's a good point. That's a but good it's point. a double edged sword too. Cause like at coming up in the scene, you have to almost constantly be posting, constantly answering messages and posting on your story and everything. So then it's hard to, not be on social media. Yeah, in, in a perfect world, you would have somebody else do your social media work. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Um, do you have a preferred style or technique? It, it sounds like you really love the, the, the Millie and then combining that into a rig. Totally, yeah. And so like I'm, I'm very, I, I really enjoy making Francini um, like uh, I image uh, Millie that is pulled down into like production cane for other glass blowers to put onto their work. But then I'm also, I've always had a deep love for like cannabis myself. So I like really enjoy creating the vessels to smoke out of. Um, so then bringing those two together into the like one of the the highest form of uh like art that's out there in this like in the in the um last scene right now that can if properly executed um like i figured i could um like come up with something pretty cool i i think you have hell yeah um is there any periods in your career where you've shifted it you know from doing just pipes and then moving to something else or you just gave up glass or any big shifts in your career? So like, I mean, I guess <laughs> right now in the middle of it and a bit of a still like existential crisis, like um, because I was uh, from the family I was raised with and the parents I came from, they were just um, down to work as hard as possible. And the main focus wasn't just trying to, make and hoard as much wealth for myself as possible, but just working an honest job and making an honest, like hard work and living. Um, and so I brought that into my glass career where I spent all last year, just grinding clear production work where it was a safe, steady, reliable income. And I've like built up a pretty good savings from my work last year, but now I'm just, uh, taking that step where I haven't taken an order in like three months. And um, I am still making Francini images and selling them through the Colorado color company and through the Facebook uh, group Maca. Um, but I really have made a, a shift and, and, and right now my family is visiting uh, with me and I'm uh, finalizing some stuff with the new house um, that I have moved into. But um I am going to recalibrate things and establish a whole colored line and a whole um, colored with millisection line. So, and start working more with um, uh, uh, shops that can uh, uh, sell stuff like that. Right on. So you're, it sounds like the artist move is coming out now. Totally. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 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 exactly. And like, yeah. And like I said, I haven't, 
like sold next to anything in the last several months. And that's pretty uncomfortable for me, but like got to take that risk because it could turn into selling really nice, beautiful art um, at that, at that point. And you always got to gamble on yourself. It's, it's hard, but it's, it's the best gamble out there. So. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. And like, and like we were talking about earlier, the only reason I've gotten as good as I am in, in the last uh, like six years is because every piece I pull out of the kiln, I'm like, oh, I hate that. And the next one needs to be better. But so then that adds to the difficulty of like bringing the artistic side to it and needing to be confident and like psyched on your own work. And like you can't bring that like doubtful energy to your own work. Um, right. Do you feel maybe you have some kind of like small depression issue where because you're always saying, and I, I did my best, but it wasn't the best. Totally. Yeah. I mean, well, yeah, I've, I've always dealt with uh, things like that, but um, I think just, I just am in my head too much. And I, and I really only go to the studio and work and um, bring my home, my work home. And I don't like, I, I recently started going out and hanging out with more people like glass blowers in my own community. And they're like, they're like, yeah, what are you talking about, dude? This is sick. This is like great looking Millie and awesome functionals. And, and so just having that outside encouragement has helped me like uh, make that next, next step as well. Right. Um, Get out of your head, man. Look from other exactly. perspectives. Exactly. Exactly. Um, what's your favorite items to blow? It, would it be the Millie's? Would it be the rigs uh, or just a little pipe? I mean, man, probably all of it. Cause like it all comes together and it's all just like, the more it's, it's, it's a, it's a mind game and a battle almost with your head to like, with like making pieces that take like m a month to execute. But um, that's really when it becomes the most fun for me is when I, it's just like the bigger, more intricate puzzle to fit together. And um, it really increases the stakes at that point when you got 40 hours into the sections before you even start making the functional then the, then the, then the like fires, then the, uh, it's really getting hot in the studio with, once you're 80 hours into the piece. But I love that adrenaline rush that you get when you're really just pushing it to the next level. That's nuts here in 80 hours on a piece. You know, it's just, I've never done that much. I don't even think I've put 30 hours into a piece. Yeah. That's just amazing to hear that. That's just, that's awesome, man. And, and like, again, I'm still at a point where I'm maybe not making it getting paid for all that time. And like, like pieces like this, I'll probably keep for myself, for my own, like uh, personal collection. And um, as a stepping point. Um, yeah. Yeah. Because like, I, again, I, li I like to uh, use the vessels myself. So, um, and putting that much time and uh, effort into a piece, it's, it's difficult to sell it for less than it's worth. Um, right. And there's a lot of learning. There's so much more to it than just, Hey, this is glass and it's worth X. It's, it's absolutely. And like, I, I've upgraded things. Like I've got myself a, a wet saw with an automatic um, like cross feed. So it will cut coins for me autom like uh, with just me needing to reset it. And then, so I can be polishing and, and then I got myself also a new um, 12 inch Covington lap wheel that is just, cut my cold working time in half, man. I, I went from using a high tech eight inch garbage machine to like, man, the motor on this new machine is as big as the entire other machine. It just, it just, yeah, it's, it's incredible. And so just, that's another one that I struggle with is I see people using the same tools that they've used for for thirst and they're making great work and they're making a career for themselves. And, I'm always just like, what's the next upgrade that I can make this better and faster? And I always doubt myself. I'm like, oh, do I need to like buy more tool on this one? I was kind of on the fence. And then um, the local homie, Joel Halen was like, hey man, I got this, uh, this um, old, this uh, lap wheel. If you can fix something on it, it's yours for a great deal. And I got it. And um Man, I just like it's insane the amount of time it's saving me. <laughs> Is that because there's more surface area to work? Because uh, I got to imagine the grips are the same. 
Totally, yeah. So, but um, surface area, but then also the like power that the machine has got. So you and, can like, press harder on it. Yep, yep, exactly. Yeah, and 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 it just the motor, the the power that the larger motor is putting out to the wheel as well. Like uh, pressing really hard with a a section or a milli coin or something on that high tech machine, the lap would like bend like this. And you would be slowing down the motor the harder you pressed, which is what you needed to get a quick uh, uh, polish on a milli, a big milli coin. Right. Uh, otherwise, you're spending all day polishing a 60 mil milli coin, and I like that's just not feasible. So um, with this machine, like just light pressure with your fingers, it just rips through, and it's it's just a whole nother level. <laughs> so invest in tools. Invest in yourself. 100%. 100% and like it's expensive but man it just like is like I, I and the other one is uh, I bought myself at the beginning of my uh, adventure kind of into making um, Francini images and making big Millie that I had to pull down I I purchased a ninja um, GG GTT ninja which is a, a Lynx phantom and then two rings yeah it was a big investment and um but thinking back thinking back like in the two years i've had that torch and the incredible amount of money it's made me that like i could have made it with my mirage of course but i wouldn't have been able to make half the work that i did and so, it probably would have taken longer potentially as well so exactly, time saved. exactly so like you're just you're making Sure, you're spending half the amount of money on the torch, but you're only going to make half the amount of money. And like the torch is a one time investment. Yes. The next 10 years of your career is exponential. That's how I look at it. Yeah, those GTTs are amazing. Uh, we had two torches. It was a Delta and a Carlisle. And yeah. I upgraded to a Cobra and it, 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 it does it faster than those two torches with less propane and oxygen use it's 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 an expensive thing but it's the tools invest them if you're going to do it invest in yourself absolutely yeah exactly 100 percent. hell yeah um what's your favorite color to work with so um i would say if i was just like coil potting a color to make a two-piece sherlock or something i i love the strikers uh NS yellow, amber purple, and uh, mystery adventuring are probably my three go-to favorites for sure. Um, but with the Millie work, I've I've honestly been working with like cadmiums almost exclusively to make a lot of these things. A cadmium black and white, um, and we're man, we're like coming into my glass career. I everybody always said like, oh, watch out for the cadmiums. Don't use them. They're impossible to work and. I almost wish people hadn't said that to me because yeah, they they take they they take more finesse and like understanding of what's going on in the glass. But I can work raw like uh, like canary, lava, cherry into whatever I needed to. Not like coil potted into a functional or something, but like I can get it to where like a uh, sculpted face or eye or something. Um, so I honestly love the cadmiums and stuff now too, just because of their uh, opaque nature. And um, especially for millies and stuff, they're just so good. And then if you encase them with, with clear too, you can work them hard and the color is so rich and so powerful. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's, there's no other substitute for sure. Um, and then making the, the functional, like uh, full color pieces, like uh, molten aura colors, gold, uh, uh, GA colors. Um, so it's almost like it's like whatever project I got going is I got a favorite color for it. And right on. Yeah, yeah. What's your uh, worst color? What color would you just say, hey, I, I ain't touching that? I mean, unobtainium. And like <laughs> uh, for me in Millie, I've heard people say you can get away with certain greens, but like anything other than timber and what Roswell, I don't fuck with it. Mm -hmm. um, just – because like sure you might be able to get away with it but then like you get away with it making a small image but then you're going to use that color to make a tile that you're going to cut up and chip stack into a section 
and then turn into a functional and it's going to explode because the color can't go that long in the kiln or can't be encased or um so i just don't mess with sketchy colors like that like unobtainium uh, opa uh opaque aqua anymore um just notoriously sketchy colors like uh um but i mean if that makes sense if needed fig i'd figure out how to work it and and go for it but there's just some applications where it's in, like just not worth trying to turn the kiln down or like it, it, work it in a special way right like unobtainium if it's just not a little dot or something like it's pretty much like uh, i just don't even keep it in the studio because like just don't even go oh, that's the dankest color but it's gonna fuck your shit up every time <laughs> and it will do that it'll call you in like it's like a siren, like, hey, use me once. And then you're like, every time. I shouldn't have fucking listened. <laughs> uh, so do you collaborate often? I mean, I, with your, Millie's going out at that uh, next level collaboration, but like just working on a rig or something? Um, so I did, um, with an old shop mate, Boro Mojo, I did work with him a couple times when we were in the studio together. And then, um, still work together here and there um but i haven't really done too many collabs just because i've got so much going on in my own uh, like head and career where um i'm struggling to keep up with like just my own shit mm -hmm. so um but which is good though so <laughs> totally 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 and, and also like i'm i want to build my career myself and and not um even if it appears that way, like, um, uh, be built off of someone else's name. But, um, but that being said, I also have made some really good friends and, um, I will like a uh, good friend here in town, e -box, We like, uh, met each other at going out to cheese shows and Sam Bush and stuff and, um, started hanging out. And then we're like, Hey man, we want to make a piece together. And, um, and I like to make connections like that and then make a piece together instead of just like working with everybody. It makes sense. Um, what's the most amount of time you've put into an actual piece? You're mentioning 80 hours and something. So what is I, the most? That's just a total guesstimation. Mm -hmm. But um, so one of these sections takes about 10 hours to make. So this piece right here, it's got two milli sections, um, and then it probably so probably about forty hours, uh, including twenty hours to make the uh, functional piece. Yeah, um, that's crazy. Very thing. But um, then this piece that I made with uh, e box that had, I mean, six sections in it. <laughs> so. Uh, and then I didn't even make the functional. <laughs> so, right. Uh, um, so you let him do the puckering because that's always the hard part, the final assembly, especially working with somebody like. Or then don't even tell them the amount of time it takes for the section until afterwards, right? <laughs> don't put the pressure on it. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, and I, I've also just been a little hesitant to, like I said, I'm just now making the kind of uh, more transition into making more nicer functional stuff with more uh, milli and longer hours and um, just everything. So I'm sure just more time intensive pieces coming up soon. I'm excited to see that, Chick, because that's that scares me and I'm not willing to do it. So thank you for doing it. I love seeing it and see like you fucking yeah. crazy people. Yep. <laughs> um, have you ever competed in any events or anything? No. No, I've just kind of been just working hard. I've gone out to like three classes. Um, but do you like competing in stuff like that? The pressure, the time I mean, constraints, or do you like just, just the creativity I, freedom? I am a very like uh, competitive, competitive person, and um, I'm – very good at getting organized and figuring out a task I could complete in a time like that. I've just never had like the time or interest or I guess time. It all has to factor. come together. Yeah. 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 But I mean, I, I would like to at some point, maybe champs or like something like that. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. 
Um, do you can and you said you got into this because you do consume. Do you consume uh, flour concentrates or do you just like the whole plant edibles as well? Yeah, just so everything man, <laughs> edibles fuck me up a little bit too much and like I've <laughs> had had a couple pretty uh, near misses <laughs> with uh, getting too fucked up on edibles. So I try to. I I think I finally learned my lesson a couple of years ago uh, in Boulder, um, but. Uh, so I try to stay away from that now. And I, I love hash and, and herb, but um, I love herb the most, but just smoking dry pipes and even uh, water like bombs is too harsh on my, uh, on my lungs and stuff. So um, I, I got a, a vaporizer for home and then I've got a, a portable vaporizer that I bring to the studio sometimes. Um, but then also with, with hash, man, I, I love hash pie, my favorite thing ever in the world. But because of that, I can't like enjoy it and smoke it leisurely. It's like, I got to smoke like five grams a day if I get into it. Yeah. So, but, but coming up with this um, signature recycler and mini tube, um, uh, I have been using more concentrates just so that I can properly function, test the pieces <laughs> so I can really get them to to be where they optimally need to be. So you like flour, but your career pushes you to concentrates a bit. And I mean, honestly, it's it's the dankest, dude. And like with the hash raws and everybody's got going now, man, it's just, it's insane. So the plant, you just like the overall cannabis, it sounds like. 100%. It's a good thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, oh, yeah. like what it's enabled us to do even, because I mean, the glass industry wouldn't, our glass industry wouldn't 100%. be without cannabis. Yeah, Bora would just be that cooking stuff, I think, called Pyrex. If it, yeah, if it yeah, like, for this. It's where, like, I mean, I'm sure people, dudes, would have, like, Snodgrass would have, like, started making, like, fume tobacco pipes or something, but there wouldn't have been this enormous industry that would have bloomed from, like, it's crazy, like, right? To be yeah, a part of this? Totally. Yeah. Um, do you have uh, hobbies outside of glass? I know you mentioned you uh, ski. Do you uh, is you still do that? And do you do other things? Totally, yeah, yeah. So like, I I do like to work hard, and like um, that's a big thing that drives me. But uh, it drives me because I do like to enjoy my life outside of glass. Like I I do a lot of hiking and camping and mountain biking and uh, um, a lot of skiing and really just. That, that's why I, that's why I work so hard is so I can enjoy my life and go out and enjoy Colorado, man, like this beautiful state that we're blessed with. Um, and in my mind, if you're not like enjoying your life, what are you what are you working for? And um, and I mean, some people get that enjoyment out of out of working, and that's totally valid. And and it's just I I uh, that's how I got to do it. And um, and. Yeah, man, I, I love mountain biking. I, I literally just last night got a poodle puppy. Oh, um, fresh. Yeah, yeah. So that is going to, I'm sure, going to be an enormous hobby for the next little while. Are but, you allergic to, to dogs? No, I just had um, a family friend back in North Carolina that um, has uh, they raise um, just like a couple uh, litters of poodles uh, here and there. And um my my parents got a poodle a couple years ago and just love that love that dog to death. They're and they're really so, neat dogs. Oh, so smart and like and, and yeah, the, I mean it doesn't hurt that they're not shedding on everything all the time. <laughs> and, uh, so my yeah, my parents came out to visit and drove the uh, puppy out here like ten weeks or I guess it's even eleven weeks now. And um, well, congratulations on the house on the 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 kid <laughs> well yeah yeah right yeah it's gonna be it's gonna be some work for sh the house too i mean shit just been a non-stop headache but that's what it is <laughs> that's what it is um what can we look forward to you in the future i think you kind of touched on that you're going to be working on your uh your your artistic line totally exactly yeah man just trying to put out um more full color work, uh, full color and, and milli functional work, and um, hopefully get some drops going with um, some 
the big store in Colorado as well that I'm going to talk to and um, really just get that next level going on. Hell yeah, I'm and, excited. Uh, and really, uh, I guess, ideally is the goal is to, uh, in a couple of years, be having a show or something like that. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Um, so when you use pieces, you mostly use your own pieces or do you use other people's pieces as well? So it depends. I, I have an enormous love for glass and that's why that's what brought me to glass blowing. And that's what like keeps my head in the game. And that's what, uh, keeps me making like 40 hour pieces that I might never sell is cause I love glass. So I, I collect from friends of mine and, um, people nice. I work with and just people I look up to and just stuff I really like. So, um, Right now, I'm really in a uh, like research phase where I'm using my own pieces, and um, I really don't use uh, other people's pieces right now. But like in a normal everyday like scenario, I enjoy using other people's pieces more. Nice, nice. Yeah, and during research, it just is what it is. You gotta you gotta research it. So totally. totally. Hell yeah. Um, do you still find you have the same love and passion now? Is it same, equal, or greater? Well, so um, it has turned into, when I was first getting into it, I was just kind of bright-eyed, and I wasn't needing to make money off it right away and stuff. So um, I just kind of, like, was making the next nicer piece and stuff and not worried about it. But working full-time and, like, pretty quickly into it, I realized, oh, I can't just be sinking – tons of money into this. So I kind of, it, 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 out of necessity had to switch to a, um, a money driven venture as well. But I would say my love for glass and like, that's really the reason why I'm still here and doing it is because I love it. Like there are other ways to make as much, if not more money, mm -hmm. but man, I, I love it and I wouldn't have it any other way. I do think that uh, all these glass blowers are slightly crazy because, man, you put a lot of time into something that goes into a water bowl, and you got to be able to get over that shit. So, totally. Well, and then also, like, that's uh, you just also got to be um, resourceful enough and mm -hmm. uh, like driven enough to solve those problems and figure out how to not have that ever happen again. Right, right. Because when something breaks, it a lot of times is your fault. You use the green that you knew you shouldn't have used. You left it out too long. Like yeah, yeah, or like or like the the seal you used was sketchy, or yeah, you didn't reheat it in your Bunsen or your uh, your your annealing flame or or whatever. It's like it's not just because nothing happened. <laughs> and so like if and um, just also even just thinking about it beforehand and, and having a good game plan of going into it and like figuring out every angle and like, man, there some of these pieces I'm making are, I got like 10 welds and just insanely complex, but I'd be, I'd feel comfortable bench cooling it because I know every single weld is good. There's good wall weight. There's no acute angles. It's, all there's no crazy thick weird spots um so and and also yeah you just gotta solve those problems like uh have a figure out a good annealing flame to reheat your piece so you're not just working it to cold um and or get a bunsen yeah yeah oh yeah um do you have any shout outs you want to give to anybody or did we miss anything uh that you'd like to add no, I mean, just, yeah, big shout out to the, the homies I work with at the Colorado Color Company, just making awesome, awesome line tubing and uh, helping me further my career with making these Franchini images and stuff. And um, just, yeah, all nice. of it. Dude, the dude's out of level 42, I guess, talked about him. But yeah, just like doing an insanely good job of uh, repping the scene in, in an incredibly great way. Um, which is just awesome to see. And uh, yeah, it's, I love it, man. I, I got only, only seeing good stuff coming in the future and uh, got, got big hopes and uh, big dreams and yeah. Hell good yeah. Stuff coming. 
Uh, and what's the best place to follow you to uh, see your work? Do you have Instagram, Facebook, website? Yeah, so you can find me on Instagram at Glass, one word. And then also on Facebook, you can find Moo Glass as well. But then I've also got a uh, Marini dedicated page uh, or Millie dedicated page called Moo's Marini, M-U-R-R-I-N-E, which is just an Italian word for, um, for uh, the, what, I, what I do. Um, and then if you like uh, Millie work and specifically uh, image, uh, Franchini images, Make sure you get on Facebook and check out uh, MACA, which stands for, um, which is a, a, a Facebook group for uh, uh, people that love Millie and there's artists selling stuff and people selling stuff out of their collection and just posting in incredible shots of their collections. Um, and I will post a new um, cane that I have available. I'll post it there, which is oftentimes a, uh, it'll sell out. So if, um, before even I can post it to my Instagram, so nice, really a great way to great way to catch some, some of the more uh, popular images that I'm releasing. Hell yeah. Well, I got to say, thanks a lot for joining us today. Mooglass. I appreciate this. It was fucking awesome, man. Yes, uh, sir. Thank you, man. Thanks for having me. Well, that was freaking awesome. Uh, super great to sit down with them. Uh, it really blew my mind uh, talking to him. You know, he already had a surfer, so that was really fucking awesome. Uh, just the guy's work is so clean. I'm really loving the way he has taken the millies, fusing them together, making the work. I had no idea how long it took to make that stuff. That just, it's, it's crazy to me. Uh, thanks a lot for, for being a part of this. Uh, really quickly, remember, uh, go check out Elevate uh, Brand Ambassadors, Elevate Dolls, Elevate Gents. It's our brand ambassador program uh, to help build this Elevate uh, mind, body, spirit, way of life thing that we're doing here. It's really fun, and I really appreciate you all being a part of this. Also, go check out Elevate Veterans. It's our 501c3. It's a really awesome way to help uh, some veterans that helped us, uh, you know, uh, live this country as free as we are. Uh, elevate, mind, body, spirit. <laughs>